I feel that this time of year is so important to stay in our gratitude. I, um, you know, this season is um, a little different for us at CCU because for Christmas Eve uh, next week, both of the services that are on Sunday and on the 24th, we're doing a special program. So I'm not doing the message. It's the, the program is the message itself. And so um, I'm getting it all in today. So, so every, every Christmas, though, I'm reminded that um, what was real funny yesterday, I ran into Santa Claus. And I was eating breakfast out with my son, and I realized today that it was the same Santa he had had his picture made with when he was about three years old here. So that was kind of special. But the, the, um, the image of Santa, of course, is really the personification of the love of Jesus. That's really what Santa is, the personification of the love that God had for us that was known in and through Jesus. So I love Christmas. I love that there's Santa, but we don't want to confuse the two, amen? But, 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 but I love it because, you know, it's, there's a lot of joy, and even all the colors this season, the red and the green, these all have deep, um, these all have deep meaning. That red is that l- color of life, right? Because that's the color of our blood, right? That life, that red is that life energy that we're celebrating that was known so completely in Jesus, right? So there's so much that we're celebrating. Even the gifts that we give this season is a reminder of the gift that Jesus was to us. So that's that's what this season is about, really. It is about love. It is about peace. It is about joy. And it's about that presence of God. So when we give a present, we're really supposed to be, what we're needing to bring to mind is that presence of God, right? So that's the idea is we're giving a gift. We're saying, I see the Christ in you, and I'm acknowledging this, and I just want to lift you up with that. That's really the spirit of this, of this year. So in unity, what we always do, we always look at the Christmas scriptures, and we're saying, what is the deeper meaning for me this season right now, and how can I apply it to my life, right? So we want the, we want the message to be very real and very practical, or else it just sounds like a good story that happened a long time ago that we revisit every year. But the idea is we want the Christ to be born in us. It's not about just celebrating 2,000 years ago, but the Christ is born in me this day. That's really our affirmation for this time of year. So the title for today's message, though, is Here Am I. Here Am I. Because without Mary, there would be a no birth, right? And that was the, the words. Uh, Mary's words to the angel were, Here Am I. Some of the scriptures say, um, uh, here am I, let it be with me according to your word, right? So this is from the Gospel of Luke. I'm going to go ahead and read it. It's about 10 or 11 verses. It might sound like a little bit of a long reading, but I want to read it to you, and I want to pull out a couple verses. And what we're going to do is look at some of Mary's story and apply it to our own walk and our own spiritual journey. So say to the person next to you, get comfortable. She's reading all 11 verses. So... <laughs> I, so I, I, I feel like I'm leaving you out over here. Just I, I'm, I'm. There's a lot going on in this service. Just know I love you, even though I'm looking this way. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's gonna say she didn't look at me. I'm leaving the church. Okay. Bless you. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? I can't stand. It. I'm gonna go this way. I can't. I can't stand it. <laughs> Call me codependent. I don't know. It could just be I love you. You know. So. Okay, this is from Luke chapter 1, and we're starting with verse 38, uh, where Mary says, it says, Then Mary says, Then Mary said, Here am I, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices 
and God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. So may God bless this reading. So I, um, I've really learned over the years to um, look at Scripture and see what's actually happening here in the story and how can I apply it because I know that the writers of the Scripture wanted just that to be done. That sometimes the way we've used the Bible in the past has been a little bit erroneous because we've read it for a story that happened long ago and have forgotten to apply it. That's why the world it looks the way it looks right now, I believe. And when some of the messages are so clear and so simple that can be applied to the spiritual journey. So number one today, if you were taking notes, would be the word surrender. Will you say that with me? Surrender, surrender, surrender. In other words, the angel tells Mary everything that's going to happen, and she says, here am I. Here am I. Say that with me. Here am I. We're saying here am I because we want to follow Mary in her spiritual journey because she gave birth to the Christ. Amen? So Mary gave birth to the Christ by saying, here am I. Let it be with me according to your word. In other words, let the personality of me step aside so that the God nature in me can come in and through. Right? So here am I is a huge statement of surrender. Surrender does not mean I'm giving up. Surrender does not mean I'm giving up. It means I'm putting things in their proper perspective. I'm surrendering to the higher self of me, to the God of me, to the soul of me. Here am I. Say that with me one more time. Here am I. And so how you know this year where to, what to say that to is what are you resisting in your life right now? What are you resisting right now? And you need to say, here am I. Find what that is. Here am I. And then as we say this, it's like your soul already knows what to do. When you say to God, here am I, what you're saying is your will, not my will, knowing that both live in you. God's not up in some sky somewhere hitting you over the head when you do it wrong and sending you down prezzies when you do it right. That is that is Santa Claus, right? You get cold when you've been bad, right? And when you've been good, you get a prezzy, right? So no, we're not talking about that. So both live in you. Both live in you. The ego and the part of you that knows, the God essence, they both live in you. So when you say, here am I, you're saying to the ego, step aside so that the soul of me can come forward. Let it be with me according to your word. In other words, whatever's supposed to come through me in this situation, right, for, my new, for this new energy in me to be born, here am I. Here am I. Say it with me one more time. Here am I, here am I, here am I. Um, for some reason, um, in my parenting lately, my son and I have had a, um, some things we're working out. And, and one of them is when it's time to get out at school. And I realize I have been resisting his nature because I move fast and he moves slow. Actually, I move very fast and he moves very slow. <laughs> and so when we're trying to do the let out and he's got all of his things and his instruments and his bag and his lunchbox and there are people behind us trying to let their kids out too. And we know we're about to open the door and get out because we're at school. But right then, a long story starts. And I'm saying, sweetie, it's time to get out. Would you get out? Would you get out? Get out, get out, get out. There are people behind us. I know this is a funny story but at Christmas, but this is, this is to me how the spiritual life is. It's in these really seemingly mundane daily things. And I realize this is not a great way to start his day. Or mine. <laughs> but especially his, because like we've had this wonderful morning, there's been a prayer, there's been an intention in the driveway, listening to a one-minute 
meditation. There's been, you know, a lot of, lot of great time in the morning. And then this is the end to our time together. So the other day, leaving the house, I said, I'm thinking, okay, how can I unravel this thing that I'm doing? And, I'm, and I just keep saying, here am I, here am I, here am I. So I say, sweetie, um, I know we're on our way to school right now. And I don't know if you've noticed that when it's time to get out, sometimes you start a long story. And there are people behind us. And so I end up feeling like I'm rushing you. And I realize me saying, get out, get out, get out, get out, louder is not helping. So maybe could you tell me the story now or after I pick you up? Right? So, so me reframing and getting clear about what was going on. So then we were pulling up to the school. We were getting close. I said, and are you, do you think it would be good to get your things together and he said I understand mama I understand I said okay this is wonderful there was still a little hesitation there at the end but we made it and there was no and there was no for me get out get out get out get out he he is and there's nothing wrong with what he's doing see I was resisting who he is and waiting so here am I right I want to be the kind of parent, right, that's a safe parent, that's not, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get yelled at, right, as I'm getting out. No, what a terrible way to start your school day. But just me kind of unwinding, like, what I thought had to happen changed the whole dynamic. And so I could really help prepare. So when I'm more present, I'm helping prepare for what's happening. I think that's, that's going to improve things. Here am I. It's a simple thing, but it changed everything for me. Will you say with me, here am I, together? Here am I. So as long as I'm resisting and I'm not surrendering, I'm going to have that energy of, uh, 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 right? But as soon as I surrender, something new opens up. Some new possibility opens up. And please don't ask him about that. Um, (laughs) It's hard enough being a minister kid, so, so, so. Number two, if you were taking notes, is belief. Belief. A lot of times this time of year, and I, uh, there, you see the word believe. You know, it's like believe in the magic of, of Christmas. And I, I even have that in my kitchen on my, my little special Christmas towel, believe. But what does it really mean? So in the scriptures it says, blessed is she who believed that there, w- there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her. So what to me this season is about is believing God's promises to us, right? That we are loved, that we are supported, that we do have peace, that faith will get us through. These are the kind of promises that I'm relying on to get through this season. Believe. Blessed is the one who believes in the fulfillment of God's promise. So after we surrender, we have to believe then. And so, so sometimes what, I, what I've realized is that what we believe is largely unconscious. What's driving our behaviors is largely unconscious. It's very often this kind of unspoken anxiety of what will people think or what, what, what's going on or how can I change what's happening. There's this unconscious thing going on. But if you can take that out and make it more conscious, then, wow, things can begin to shift for you in a really positive way. You know, we, we offer so many things here at the church to help with that. We, we offer classes. We offer meditation. And yesterday we did soul collage. Uh, there's Bickley right there. Bickley was our facilitator, Bickley Wilson, one of our members. And I've done soul collage for many years. And it's such a wonderful process. And um, what happens as you do some of the collaging is that, especially if you're working with some negative energy that you're holding on to, once you put it on the card, it's like the card ends up holding that energy for you. It's not going in you anymore, right? So as I was able to put the images on the card, I was like, oh, this is what I'm believing right now. And so I could set that aside and then move into really believing in what was possible rather than some other story I was telling myself. So very often I will hear people, and of course I do this myself sometimes, why are people acting so crazy at the holidays? Have you thought that or said that? 
Well, the more we say it, the more we're creating it because we're giving validity to those behaviors instead of just sending them a blessing and having compassion. Like it happened yesterday in the parking lot. It was right before I saw Santa. I was coming this way, and there was a guy on this really old, like, um, it was a real, uh, it was a chopper, like a chopper. Yeah. And there was a traffic jam in the public's parking lot. You know how fun that is. There was a traffic jam there, and I was like, man, this guy is on my last nerve because this guy was going this way. I was trying to go this way, and the guy on the chopper decided just to go around all of it, even though, you know, I had been there first. You know how that is. And, and, and there was a guy standing there, and I looked out the window. He goes, great, right? <laughs> and I was like, uh-huh, Yeah. And then I was like, well, I guess it is great. Look at that old guy on that chopper. That is awesome. So changing my belief about it changed it totally. My body opened up. My, my heart was full, and I, I got to laugh. But when I believed it was crazy, it was no fun at all. So what are you believing about yourself, about God, about the world? What are you believing the scriptures say, it is done unto you as you believe. It is done unto you as you believe. So what are you believing? So the last thing is gratitude and decree. The scriptures say, thou shalt decree a thing and it will be established for you. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established for you. What we know about gratitude is that gratitude is always, is I like to call it the great multiplier. And so as we look in the scripture, Mary does this very thing. This is in uh, chap the end of chapter 1. This is often called Mary's song of praise or the song of Mary. It says, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, on all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. What I love about that is she is absolutely claiming the power of God in her life. There's only one part where she's lowly, and all the rest she gets to be remembered for generations. I love that. She's not shy about claiming it. All generations will call me blessed, she says. All generations will call me blessed. Holy is his name. In other words, and that's me. That's who I am. That's who you are. Say to the person next to you, that's who you are. That's who you are. Yeah, that's who you are. So I want to encourage you to begin out loud giving thanks and decreeing a thing. This is going to help you get through this season, bringing that light in. And then when we start the year, we're starting with Keys to the Kingdom. It's a wonderful seven-week prosperity series to bring us up and out, right, to really get us active in the flow of God's good in our life, starting with week one, make the commitment. So this is, this is preparing you. But the, the Christ has to be born for us to really be manifesting the right stuff. Otherwise, you're just going to get more stuff. We have plenty of that. I don't need any more things. I want more God. Right? But if you haven't learned how to manifest stuff, that's an important part of the manifestation because you're learning you're a powerful co creator. Right? So, what we're working on now is bringing in this Christ energy, and we do it through surrender, through belief, and then gratitude and decreeing what is happening, what is so. So, I want to give you some practice with that. We're going to probably do a little bit of that in the meditation. But what we like to call those is affirmations. It's like giving thanks in advance for something that you want to have happen, right? So if it's a job, if it's money, whatever it is, we give thanks in advance. Say with me, I give thanks in advance. I give thanks in advance, right? And so we're calling it forth with our word, knowing our word is creative and does not return to us void. We learn to say aloud what we are bringing forward, right? So we want to decree a thing, in Mary's case, it was that she would be remembered for all generations. And the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Right? What if you focused on God has done great things for me? God has done great things for me, and you started naming those things. 
Naming those things out loud, I can't tell you how good it feels to do that. I do it in my vehicle. I do it in the end of my meditation time. Sometimes I sing it as I'm going through the house. Name it, name it, name it, name it. We know the, the, the formulas, name it, claim it, manifest it. We know that. Right? So we want to begin to give thanks for all that we have been given, for all we already have. And then we're giving thanks in advance for that which is going to come through us. Because remember, everything you are receiving right now is according to the level of your own acceptance. Everything. Everything. So let's relax into this idea in a time of meditation. I want to, um, it might be a little longer meditation. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you need a break. So I want to invite you to, um, if you are holding on to something, just set it aside so that you can be really present to the Christ energy. Because this, this is a really sweet and special time of year because of the spiritual energy that wants to be known in us. Now, more than any other time of year, there is a focus on giving. There is a focus on abundance. There is a focus on love and peace and belief. So we want to work with that energy. We want to kind of ride that energy. But we want to make it an inward process where we say, God, here am I. Here am I. As you take a few deep breaths, you might notice that your body begins to still. And even your mind will begin to kind of slow down and rest. You just, you'll find that there's space there. If your mind right now is thinking thoughts, just imagine those thoughts going away in a cloud, just disappearing, being taken away. As those clouds take away those thoughts, so you are left with blue sky. Notice as you breathe more deeply that even your heart rate goes down and your body relaxes. So I just want to encourage you to release tension out of your fingers and toes. Just imagine it leaking out and the earth taking it from you, knowing God loves you, God supports you. So there's no reason to hold tension or anxiety. Breathe deeply, remembering God loves you. Just imagine yourself surrounded with the love and light of God. And as you breathe, you're breathing in love, breathing in light, realizing this is your true self. This is who you really are. As you breathe, you will begin to connect with the heart the heart is the place of the soul so I want you to bring to mind whatever it is you're resisting right now you hold it as a image in your mind and literally say to that image here am I here am I let it be with me according to your word. Here am I. Know that as you surrender that you are releasing the power of God in your life in a powerful way. 
your ego is stepping aside so that the true self, so that the soul of you can come forward. Here am I. This is a tremendous place of power for you. And then ask God to show you, what have you been believing about the situation? And as you surrender more, God will give you new thoughts, new beliefs. Here am I. And now take a moment to give thanks for all that you have already received. Acknowledge all the good, realizing gratitude is the great multiplier. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And then begin giving thanks for all that you are bringing forward. Thank you, God, for the right situation, for meeting the right people. Thank you, God, for divine intervention in the issue I'm working with. Thank you, God, for abundance on every level. Thank you, God, that abundance is here and now, that I am lifted, I am supported, I am blessed. Thank you, God, for the right and perfect relationships that support me and I can get to support others. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all the love, for all the support. Thank you, God, for helping me move forward. Thank you, God, for introducing me to the right people to help me move forward. Thank you, God, for all the abundance I already have. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for the clothes on my back. Thank you for the money in my wallet. Thank you for the wallet itself. Thank you for my home. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my job. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all good things. Thank you. Thank you for CC Orlando. Thank you for the prayer chaplains that pray for me every day. Thank you, God, that my dreams and my goals are made manifest. I know you've got me. I know you're supporting me. I know you're helping me. Thank you, God. I see that. Here am I. Here am I. Let it be with me according to your word. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I know God loves me. I know God supports me. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus the Christ. And thank you for Mary so that the Christ could be born as love, as hope, as joy, as peace. Thank you, God. We rest in a few moments of silent gratitude, knowing that God loves us. Into this space of gratitude and beautiful energy, I invite you to speak names of anyone you would like supported in prayer, knowing as you speak these names, they will be lifted and supported in God's love and grace. Thank you, God. We know you hear our prayers. We know we're loved. We know we're supported. We know we are blessed. So we claim that, and we thank you. Our prayer this holiday season is to know this Christ energy so that we can be a blessing not only in our own lives, but to the world. 
We acknowledge all these souls doing this beautiful spiritual work. We see them supported and blessed in all things and in all ways, knowing it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. For our time together, we are grateful. We are blessed. Together we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Together, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.